it's sort of funny how people often say they want to help the homeless. They come up and I qualify why they're trying to present me with something. And usually they're trying to present something to me that I didn't ask for. What I've discovered over the last year and a half of trying to move myself back into society was that we'll, we launched COVID. And COVID impacted people hiring. Especially hiring people like me who have some legal challenges. It's a little hard to get a home when someone has committed identity theft and fraud on your name. It's also hard to get a possibility of a place when you don't know how they'll treat you and you don't know who's been ahead of you to speak on your behalf without your consent. When I talk about these things, I'm also talking about how people like to use financial abuse to do things to people. And it might piss people off who only hear one video. But if they're only watching one video, they're not really understanding what God is doing for them. Sometimes people have secret code words. And those secret code words end up in titles of my videos. What that should be saying to them is God is listening to them. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that video itself is about them. It might be that another video is more about them and what they're not doing correctly is listening to God in the direction of what they should be watching, what they should be hearing, what they should be reviewing, or what should they should be thinking. Some people take the effort to try to come out to see someone, but then they don't actually stop to talk to them. And that's the foolishness. You see, anybody can play with any kind of information, but unless you take the moment to assess them yourself, how would you know? What I talk about, what I channel about, what I script about, what I do about is about the different types of people that I have to interact with and the different types of people that God knows will listen. But some people just don't listen. They get put off by one video and go, I'm going to write them off now. I'm not going to do what God was prompting me to. And that's the failure they make before God. When God says, go help him, he means go help him. But to help someone like me or to help someone like anyone else is no different than when you give any type of help in any type of industry, in any type of service business. You have to first figure out what they need. If you can't figure out what they need, then you really shouldn't even try because most likely they're just going to play with something simple. I need a new pair of shoes. So you ask me what I need, that's what I need. Because you didn't ask me why. Because someone's been ruining my shoes. And if I show you that video, or if I take a photograph and stick it on this video here to show you what I mean, you'll get it because most shoes don't wear like this. And I've had a lot of people attack my shoes over the course of time in this hate crime. So for me, a pair of shoes keep my feet from being damp in the rain. And we've had a lot of pouring rain. At the same time, I need a new pair of pants. But pants that I need cost me about $15 to $20. And someone who's arrogant will go, well, why doesn't he buy some? That's not expensive compared to what we spend in New York or California or Chicago. Because in truth, I'm still living out of poverty. And the first thing that a person has to adjust for is sustenance. Sustenance is the food that they need for the day. So I might have spent my money, my $12, on food in advance for the day. So that I have food no matter where I choose to walk or where I choose to stay. The second thing we tend to worry about is service. How do we ensure that we are engaging with people in a way that they'll understand our skill sets and might want to entreat us in terms of introducing us to an opportunity that's right for us? You see, just because I can walk across the street and enter some sort of fast food restaurant and get a job, in theory, it doesn't mean it's right for me. I did that when I was 15. I'm now in my 50s. Why would I do that again? It's not about arrogance and it's not about pride. It's about the reality of that f amount of money per hour is not going to provide for me the third thing I need, which is shelter. And it's also not going to provide me any extra, extra extensional fuel income in order for me to provide for someone who has going to be my wife or has children. You see, when I came here, I came here with a, a vision and a mission and values of my own abilities. But I'm probably leaving here because God has said we've timed out here. But in order for me to time out of here, in order for me to move out of here, there has to be the one who's willing to help me out of here. And helping me out of here is listening to the Lord saying, this is an adventure. This is an opportunity. This is one of the things where you grab your gear and you pack a bag and you go there and you just go with it you see where God leads you. There's no requirement to be anything other than genuine, and there's no fear because this one's not going to harm you. But you, in your marvelous way, can harm people by the things that you do and the things that you say. But please don't expect that he's going to do things for you just because you might pay. Because you can dump him off in another city and can be homeless there, but then he starts all over again. You see, people always want to help someone, people always want to buy food for someone, but that in itself is immoral. 
And I'm trying to get people to understand this, that you should not be offended that I don't want your food during a time of COVID. And you should not be offended that I don't want your food because you're a stranger to me. And we teach our children stranger dangers. We teach our children about human trafficking. We teach our children about immoral people that want to swipe our kids and take them away. It's no different for adults and American citizens or the elderly. We have to be careful and we have to teach our people to be cautious. But if you're a trustworthy person, and I'm a trustworthy person, and God is saying to you, please help him, then the first question out of your mouth is, after hi, in an introduction, is how could I help you today? What do you hear in your soul of what would be right for us today? But you might have an inkling of what you're supposed to do with me, and I probably have an inkling of what I'm supposed to do with you, but until we have a real discussion that could last for 20 or 30 minutes, how will we ever know? You see, the whole part of networking is when we go to a networking event, we're establishing and we're informing people of who we are and what we do. And then those people decide whether or not they want to talk to us again based on how we engage them, what we ask them, and what we learn about them. But at the same time, that one-time interaction can turn into an actual business opportunity and a transaction of money. But the other time, it might just be a beginning introduction that leads to the next option, which is a one-on-one. You see, we're in this large group event, we meet all these people, we pick up business cards, and then we call someone, or we email them, or we text them and say, hey, I'd like to get together to learn more about what you do and see how we might interact for a profitable partnership or strategic alliance. And that's what people do.